guys and welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're back over on the YouTube account and we are looking at the Nightmare Corridor. So we've started to see a little bit of consistency coming out with the guides as well as the formations within the Nightmare Corridor. I'm going to run through the ones that the whales are using and then I'm going to go ahead and check out the guide. So looking at the basic builds in here, it is of course the Awakened Heroes which we're seeing very predominant. At this point, we are not seeing the Awakened version of Sophia in the Nightmare Corridor. I know we did see her show up in one formation in the Cursed Realm, but as of now, she is not being utilized in here. So again, we kind of want to run through exactly what formations the Whales are using or the, the top players within AFK Arena, and then we'll check out the guide, which does have a couple variations of it. So looking at this one, guys, it is the Awakened version of Thalia, you can see right there. We also do have buffers in here, which interesting enough, you can see the original version of Belinda in here. Now she has a blessing ability, which can amplify the damage that we actually get from that Awakened version of um, Thalia. Vithiel, of course, in a buffer. We have Rain in here as a buffer, and then Laika, of course, as a debuffer and a buffer with the awe ability, a very solid team overall, doing almost 9 billion damage. Now, interesting here, we've seen the rise of Crisio. Now, even though he's only used in this formation, I believe he's only used in one of the Nightmare Corridor comps at all. We also see Oren in there. He does require a significant build out, like a 30930, probably as a minimum, to really be driving the damage, which it's the same with Oren in there. Both of them doing incredibly well, and also they are staple heroes within their regarded towers. So both the Mauler Tower and the Wilder Tower, they do incredibly well. Then of course we have Solus in here as a buffer and a protector. As a healer, we have Entendre, which is very tough to kill. And then of course we do have um, Warwick in here as the debuffer running the Fox. So this is the Fox Fatale. We're actually seeing the fox in here for some crowd control um works incredibly well within the formation and you can see where it's not just one hero in this formation that is really driving the damage but it is split to three what's that six probably almost seven plus billion damage but split evenly among those two looking at the next one it is um the awakened version of matria overall incredibly incredibly well interesting enough is she has kind of replaced the original version of Athelia is what of what or excuse me the original version of Taylin. So this Orthos comp used to always run Taylin. As of now, um, Matria has completely replaced Taylin within these formations. Which if you haven't built her, you don't need to build her now. There are a few niche places where we're seeing her best in slot is that original version of Taylin. But in here, guys, Orthos, when he has the time stop. So Orthos is really the trigger in this one. When Orthos does his time stop, the original version, or excuse me, um, Matria is going to be able to move, amplifying her damage, as you can see right here through the roof. You have buffers in here with Rowan. You have buffers in here with Mortis. Buffers in here with Tamaris. A solid, solid team in here, just all focusing on buffing up Matria. And then, of course, with her being able to move well, Orthos ults is what really drives the damage within this formation. Then we get into Thane. Now, the guide says that Thane is the one that you want to mark first. This is really a tough boss mode in here that he is super effective again in here. We also do have Silas as a buffer. And of course, Thane is going to be on the enemy side, which means Scrug plays a huge role. Um, Soros is in here as a healer, which can keep the entire team alive. And then Joan as well as a very solid buffer. Most of these heroes are going to go right to the enemy side, which means that Scrag is going to benefit all of them. Even Silas, when he comes over to do his ult, he will be on that side. Same with Joan, same with um, Soros. They will all be over on that enemy side. Now looking, of course, the Awakened version of Belinda. This is the variation that we've seen in here with running Anasta as the protection in here. Um, and then overall, you see Palmer, you see Halos, and you see Ro uh, Rose as buffers for that Awakened version of Belinda and doing almost the most damage of any hero here. Almost, I mean, 9.4 billion damage is kind of incredible to see in, what, 25 seconds? So it's pretty crazy. Um, but overall, this is the one within the Nightmare Corridor that we're seeing Sophia slowly being worked into. Um, but we're going to have to see exactly what comes with it. And then, of course, running the Owl up here. And the final formation is still reliant on Scarlet, which I love as well as um, Rem in there. We have Demia in there. And then Estrilda and the Twins are both major buffers in here. But it's still really cool to see that Scarlet is still having a lot of utility within this game mode. 
All right, guys, so I'm going to hop over. Let's bring up the guides. We'll run through them really quick, take a look at some variations to these. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, guys, so here is the Hall of Nightmares. Again, this is a translation. I believe it comes out in Chinese. A couple different places that these guides do come from. So recommended mercenaries. You can see, guys, the awakened version of Thane for the team in there. There's not a lot of substitutes in there, unfortunately, um, but that's what we're seeing. And this does vary a little bit from the ones that we just looked at, and I think it is due to the heroes that you have built or the availability of some of the heroes. Then we have Matria, the awakened version of um, Athelia, and then Belinda as well within here. Three recommendations, tank to 77, the rest 107 plus. It is going to be the driving factor. And again, there are a few different variations, which is why I did want to cover this. So looking here, guys, we have Crisio with Vithio, which we know was not in the first formation. Um, we do have the awakened version of Athelia right here. If you don't have either of those, you can actually substitute Baden in there. Hodgkin in here as a buffer. And then, of course, Warwick in here as a debuffer running the seal. Now, if you are missing a couple of these heroes, including the awakened version of Athelia, Lucretia still works in here. We have Damon in here as well as Hodgkin, again, as the buffer. And then Warwick as the bone breaker with his bone breaker ability, really as the debuffer within this formation. So a couple different variations for the first one. Now, the Grotesque Mage. This one run, runs pretty true. Now, we did have Crisio in here. Um, here, you can also run Drez and Brutus. You can see kind of the variation in here with the Winged Lion. So a little bit of a change in there. Now, we did run, again, in that Bastion slot was Crisio. Really um, makes a difference between who you have built and how you have them built. That is why, again, I like to cover this because it does show a few different for, uh, formations in here. Drez will still do a lot of damage while Curcio is still the best in slot within there. So I'm hopefully between all the bosses, I mean, you can utilize some of the variations and get some of these done. Now, Demonic Nemora Elite Mortis is prioritized. Um, so again, if you have Mortis built out a little bit lower, um, he still does work incredibly well. He is one of the few heroes in AFK Arena that we see absolute phenomenal performance even at a lower level without having him fully built out, doesn't require the furniture, doesn't require the engraving, plus 20 signature item will suit him incredibly well within this game mode. Then we have Rowan in here, we have Orthos, then of course it is built around Matria, which works incredibly well with the Savage Souffle. So variations guys, if you do not have Matria in here, you can put Kren, Kren is the substitute according to this. Um, and then of course we have Tamaris in here. If you don't have Tamaris, a lot of players are running Amelia in here there are a few variations kind of to these formations so you can see what else you can put in if you're not running all of the heroes in afk arena now for the second one this is where the awakened version of thane does come in you can see this is very similar to this is i think the exact formation that we're running running with joan in there running with uh, might have been a little bit of a different order but changing it up a little bit i believe we ran screg within this formation because everybody was over there um, for the weaker accounts, you can see throwing Scrag in there instead of running Lycan in there, but again, running um, running the Moth in there because the Moth is going to go right on that Awakened version of Thane. Now, of course, the substitution for the Awakened version of Thane is really um, Orin, which again does work incredibly well, but for the Fire Demon, it, it it's very tough. This is a very, very tough boss, guys, when it comes to fighting this boss and killing this boss out. Of course, the Awakened version of Belinda. In my opinion, guys, the Awakened version of Belinda is still the number one priority to have within AFK Arena and the Awakened Heroes. We thought Sophia would have a really groundbreaking um, change to AFK Arena being a support hero. Unfortunately, at this point, we have not really seen that. So again, this one does run run Rain. We're the best in slot. The, the Whale Comps were actually running Anasta. Um, if you don't have Halos, you can run Anasta in there. You can see in the second formation, and this actually puts Damia in here. Poorly pumped, um, the Belinda and Damia will also work. So if these are a little bit underbuilt, they will still work incredibly well, of course, using the Owl in here. And again, it, it's interesting to see the formations in here and then see what the actual whales are running or the larger players are running within AFK Arena. And then, of course, guys, it is still Scarlet. Works incredibly, incredibly well. And this was one of the older formations actually running Scarlet with Grez was, again, an older formation that we've seen an incredible amount of times. But it also running, you can see in here, we have the twins, we have Estrella, and then we also do have Rain. 
If you don't have rain, you can swap in Damia. If not, you can look at Belinda, you can look at Hodgkin, some variations in there. And then also running Rem. If you do not have Rem built, um, the Awakened version of Baden in there. And then of course, Grez, depending on who you do have built. Now this does help a lot again with the variations between all the information over in here, what we get over on Reddit, Discord, a couple different places, guys. Again, I wanted to cover some of the variations that we see in here. Leaderboards are a huge way to do it, but not only leaderboards is the recommended um, formations within there based on your heroes. If you can go through and you can make two or three strong teams out of the six that are required, that way you can take out those bosses, change up a little bit of the rotations, but making sure that you're really pushing this game mode because of the poke coins and everything else that you do get, the rewards in here are pretty nice. So all right guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, thank you guys for watching.